Valor needs first strength, then a weapon. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today's video is of a different sort than normal, as we take a look at the five most powerful weapons in the entire Legendarium. Before we begin, here are some disclaimers about how I made my choices. With the exception of Morgoth, no weapons of the Valar, or even Maiar, really are on this list, for we don't know what they really were, even if we can be sure that they did have them, like Aeonwe did. If we did include them, I have no doubt that Tulkas' fists would be number one on this list, because Melkor never wanted to catch those hands. <laughs> also, in terms of power, we are looking at deeds accomplished by these weapons to measure their power level, and what we may assume they were capable of within reason. Weapons that we can assume to be somewhat powerful but know next to nothing about won't appear on this list, except maybe in some honorable mentions. Also, I should say that I'm looking in the notes of the History of Middle-earth books as well. Finally, some weapons in the Legendarium were powerful through the image or symbol they provided, but in terms of actual power as a weapon, they might have been lacking in comparison to some on this list. Indeed, my favorite weapon, shout out to Enduril, will not make this list. Alrighty, with all of that in mind, hopefully my list and reasons for them make sense, but let me know what your lists are in the comments below as well as your favorite weapons, regardless of power level. If you hear about a weapon that you'd like to learn more about, please check out my video on all the named weapons in the Legendarium. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin. Number five, the Morgul Knife of the Witch King. We start off with a strange and perhaps controversial weapon, the Morgul Knife of the Witch King. In his confrontation with Frodo near Weathertop, the Witch King stabbed Frodo with this blade, and unless the Morgul wound received proper healing, the Black Sorcery would have perverted Frodo into a wraith, stealing his life as he had known it, and making him akin to the Nazgul and other wraiths ones who could affect the living world, yet resided in the unseen world. Now this weapon is interesting for many reasons, and honestly it deserves a video of its own with more theories and speculations. Whereas originally Glamdring or Orcrist filled this spot of number 5, for they were similar swords, and one had even seen the demise of a Balrog, I actually consider Morgul weapons with this wraith-creating ability to be far more powerful for a few reasons. First, not only does a Morgul wound kill the enemy of the Witch King, but it kills him slowly until he is a wraith, becoming a servant of the Witch King instead of an enemy or merely a corpse. Second, the sorcery and magic that goes into making a Morgul weapon is unknown to the Free Peoples, and a wound caused by such a weapon is extremely difficult to heal, as only a select few in the history of Arda, like Elrond, could in fact heal such a wound. In fact, we as readers don't even know how exactly Elrond healed him. Third, just as we don't know the source of the Morgul magic, we don't know how many of these weapons are out there, or how difficult they were for the Witch King and or other Nazgul to make. There could in fact be other Morgul weapons more powerful than this knife, but since we never see them, I'm sticking to the Morgul knife here. Fourth, even after the healing, Frodo still suffered from the Morgul wound every year until going to Valinor. Finally, and most concerningly, this weapon was potentially strong enough to overcome the gift of Iluvatar and prevent a mortal from dying. To what extent, I'm not sure, as wraiths cannot quite be considered living, but even then their former selves aren't entirely dead either. Something would linger on. This is a grim and powerful weapon indeed. Number four, Ringil, the Sword of Fingolfin. When the High King of the Noldor, Fingolfin, approached the Gates of Angband in a desperate hour and demanded the Dark Lord Morgoth come forth and duel him, he carried with him the Sword Ringil, which glittered like ice. During his fateful battle with Morgoth the enemy, Fingolfin wounded Morgoth seven times with this one sword, before Fingolfin met his end. Now, while weapons were still relatively new to the elves, this was still most likely forged by the Noldor, who were the greatest of elven smiths, especially those who had lived in Valinor and had learned some of the earliest secrets of weapon crafting. In Tolkien's works, weapons from days past had secrets and powers that lacked in the more ordinary weapons of later days. And this is apparent in many cases, like those of Glamdring and Orcrist. Yet this sword was even older than they, the ones forged in Gondolin. And what's more, it was wielded by the High King of the Noldor himself. And what's even more than that, this sword permanently scarred Morgoth seven times during its greatest hour. With the line about it glittering like ice, I imagine as well there must have been some sort of magic or enchantments upon the sword, making it this powerful. While there is little more to say on the weapon and its fate, we know what it did wound the most powerful of the Ainur seven times and permanently, even if Morgoth was weaker than he had once been at this point. That is still quite a feat. Number three, Grond, Morgoth's Hammer of the Underworld. Speaking of Fingolfin and Morgoth's duel, we cannot forget about Morgoth's Warhammer that he fought Fingolfin with, 
like I almost did when making this list. <laughs> when Fingolfin came to the gates and demanded a duel, Morgoth went and brandished this great warhammer. So powerful was this hammer and the one wielding it that, when it smote the earth, it shook the ground like thunder upon each hit, and it created smoldering pits in the ground which erupted smoke and flame, and these pits would eventually trip up Fingolfin, leading to the elf's demise. While we don't know much else about this weapon, and Morgoth avoided going forth to personal combat himself after this duel, we can be positive that the weapon was not lacking in power. I would imagine that in his last hours before his final capture and expulsion from Middle-earth, he wielded this hammer against the people of Valar, yet was still overcome. I also imagine that looking into the Dagor Dagoroth idea, he would have wielded this hammer during the last battle as well. But since this weapon could cause so much geological damage when it was properly wielded, and it was probably forged in the pits of Angband, and it was the choice weapon of the most powerful Dark Lord. This was most likely the most powerful weapon of evil in the entire Tolkienian legendarium. Number two, Dramborleg Axe of Tour. Now this is perhaps the most interesting weapon on this entire list, as it's super obscure. In the Book of Lost Tales Part Two, which is in the History of Middle-earth series, the publishings of the notes of Tolkien and his world, the Axe Dramborleg appears a few times in the chapter discussing the fall of Gondolin. Originally made for Tour upon King Torgon's request to his artificers, this weapon, meaning Thuttersharp, in the language of the Gondolin, was said to cleave all armor and stun its enemy. During the fall of Gondolin, as told in these notes, Tour slew a lord of the orcs and some others with it, but most notably, it is said Tour used Dramborleg to kill five Balrogs. Five Balrogs. The axe would go on to be an heirloom of Tour's descendants, the kings of Numenor, and was lost in the downfall. Now let me say that this axe is not mentioned in the more definitively canon writings of Tolkien, and it's obscure for a reason, as this early telling of the fall of Gondolin was actually quite different than the one in the later versions in many ways, as one can see with how Tolkien went about writing Balrogs during this version of the tale. With all of that in mind, whether one chooses to regard this and all of its lore as canon may define its place on this list or not. For me, I like to think that some version of this axe existed in the fall of Gondolin as it happened in the canon. And though it may not have slain five Balrogs, it was clearly meant to be a very powerful weapon, and so for me it is number two on this list. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this weapon in particular. Since it's technically in the notes of the Legendarium, I wanted to include it here. Number one, Anglakil slash Girthing, Sword of Turin. Finally, in my opinion, Anglakil, better known by its later name Girthing after its reforging, is the most powerful weapon in the entire Legendarium, and I think I have many good reasons to back this up. Of all the weapons on this list, it has the most extensive story and lore, so I won't get into it much, but after going from Eul the Dark Elf to Thingol to Beleg to Turin, it accomplished great and terrible deeds alike. Now before we get into my reasoning, I should say that Anglakil had a mate, Anguiril, a very similar, near-identical sword. Yet it is not on this list, for though it surely had comparable powers, we don't know nearly anything about it or its deeds, so I will just give it an honorable mention. Now, as for my reasons for why this sword was the most powerful weapon in all of Tolkien's works, first, it was made of iron meteorite, meaning a substance foreign and rare to Arda, and it could cut through iron. Second, and very importantly, every time that Girthing explicitly cut a character, Beleg, Broda the Easterling, Glaurong, and even Turin himself, among many others, each of these characters would die by Girthang in the end. Even Turin, whom once this blade accidentally cut when he was in bondage, would be slain by it in the end. This doesn't mean its wielder couldn't lose a battle like Turin did during the fall of Nargothrond, but I mean to say that every time this weapon drew blood from an enemy, the weapon would end up killing that enemy. At least, as far as we know. From a story and thematic point of view, that is very important as far as this list is concerned, for Girthang slew, and it slew easily, sometimes too easily as in the case of Beleg. Third, when Turin went to slay himself upon the sword, it spoke to him, at least in the tale, but we must regard this as realistically as we regard anything else in Tolkien's works. This meant that the sword had some profound fate or doom tied to it, perhaps even a spiritual entity. Finally, although the Dagor Dagoroth, the Battle of All Battles, may be considered not canon, at least not the version that we have in the notes, as the Marring of Arda by Melkor would never truly be over, like Dramborleg, it is still in the Legendarium, if even in just the notes. Thus, we can look at the fact that, during this battle, it was by this sword, reforged as it must have been after breaking after the death of Turin, that Melkor was finally killed. And he was killed by Turin, wielding this blade. Like I said before, if Girthing drew blood, 
it ended up killing that enemy. And it was the same with Melkor, the greatest evil in and outside of Arda. This weapon would kill the Dark Lord in the end, even if Melkor wielded his weapon Grand against Turin. So I must say that Englakil slash Gurthang is the most powerful weapon in the Legendarium. There we have it. That is my list for the five most powerful weapons in the Legendarium and my reasons for the order. What do your lists look like? And also let me know what ideas you have for similar videos like this in the comments below. And so we come to the end of our tale. From this tale on the most powerful weapons in Arda, we see that power does not equal virtue. We should take care in the weapons we use and the reasons why we use them, as weapons are used far too often in this world without virtuous reason. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed my list here today. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts and lists concerning all of this? Let me know in the comments below. Again, while I love all of these weapons, the meaning and symbol of Anduril was the greatest thing about that weapon, making it my favorite. Thanks to our Valor tier patrons, Adrian De La Torre, Chris Ortner, Kyle Wetzel, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Poot, and Mark Kralik, Blair Scout and Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, Kondar, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolik, Kuzan, Brandon Gwyn, and Molly Sullivan, Daniel Burns, Anthony Harmon, and Dorwin Gray. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of our patrons and YouTube members. The support means the world to me. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a video detailing every moment Iluvatar changed Middle-earth. You all are the best, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.